Welcome to iLector Online. In this video, we're going to show you why e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. Of course, we need to remember that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So it's an imaginary number. It doesn't really exist. But there are, there, there are a lot of applications for which is just perfect. Now, if e to the i theta is indeed equal to the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, then it can be represented graphically like this. We have a unit circle, we pick a point on the circle, we call this the real number axis, and we call the plane away from the real number axis the imaginary plane. And so that means that if we pick a point right here, we can see that the x value of that point corresponds to the cosine of theta, and the y value of that point corresponds to i times the sine of theta. Like that. Ooh, run out of room there. Okay, so it is essentially the sum of a real number plus an imaginary number. Now, as theta changes, as theta gets bigger and bigger, you can see that the point will continue to go around the circle, and essentially it will go around the circle. So the real part of the number will vary between positive 1 and negative 1, back to positive 1, back to negative 1. So it will vary like the cosine function. And the imaginary part of that will vary like the sine function. So it will be up to plus i and minus i and plus i and minus i and back and forth like that. So it means that this is simply a sum of a real oscillating function, the cosine of theta, and an imaginary oscillating function, the sine of theta. But how do we know that those two are equal to one another? Well, we can come back over here, and what we can do is we can expand the cosine of theta, the sine of theta, and e to the x into the infinite series that they're equivalent to. So now what I can do is I can take e to the x and plug in i theta for x and see what we get. So let's try that. So therefore e to the i theta is going to be equal to 1. Oop. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. I forgot to write the 1. So 1 plus x. Now x is the exponent, so the exponent is i times theta. Plus i theta quantity squared divided by 2 factorial plus i theta cubed over 3 factorial plus, and now you can see the pattern, this will become i theta to the 4th power over 4 factorial plus i theta to the 5th power over 5 factorial plus i theta to the 6th power over 6 factorial and so forth. All right, now what is i squared? Well, i squared is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared, and so that becomes negative 1. So this can now be written as e to the i theta is equal to 1 plus i theta plus, oh, well, actually, no, not a plus, because i squared is negative 1, so that now this becomes negative theta squared over 2 factorial. And i cubed is equal to i times i squared, and i squared is negative 1, so this becomes negative i. So this can be written as negative i times theta cubed over, oops, and this should be factorial, 3 factorial. And then here we have i to the fourth, and so i to the fourth is equal to i squared times i squared, and i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. And so this becomes plus theta to the 4th over 4 factorial, and then the whole thing repeats again. So i to the 5th is i to the 4th, which is 1, times i, so this becomes plus i theta to the 5th over 5 factorial, and then we get minus, because we get i squared times i to the 4th, so that becomes a minus 1, so minus theta to the 6th over 6 factorial, and then we get uh, minus i, minus i theta to the 7th over 7 factorial, and then we get, again, plus theta to the 8 over 8 factorial, and then, so it keeps going like that. All right, now let's take a look at that, and let's take a look at this. So e to the i theta has a 1 in it, so that's part of the cosine function. So let's look for all the, all the 
terms here that correspond to the cosine function. And let's uh, use a different color. Let's underline that. So we have the 1, which is right here. We have the minus theta squared over 2 factorial, which is this one right here. We have the uh, plus theta to the 4th over 4 factorial, which is this one right here. And we have minus theta to the 6th over 6 factorial, which is this one right here. And then you can see that again, this one right here will be part of this one right here. And you can see that the alternating terms in the series expansion correspond to the cosine of theta. So that means that this is already equal to, so we can say that e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta. If I grab all these underlined terms underlined in red, Okay, so now next, we're trying to match things up with the sine of theta, but not actually the sine of theta. We have the i sine of theta. So that means that we need to add an i. And so i sine of theta will be equal to i times this, and 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 so forth. And do we have those terms? We certainly do. Here we have the i theta. Here we have the minus i theta cubed over 3 factorial, so we have this. And here we have plus i theta to the fifth over 5 factorial, so we have this term. And here we have the minus i theta to 7 over 7 factorial. And as you can see that every other uh, term is now associated with the i sine of theta. So that means that we have the plus i sine of theta and you can then see that this is indeed the case, that e to the i theta is simply the sum of the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. And again, this is used a lot in mathematics, it's used a lot in electrical engineering and physics, where we have phasers that go around and we'll have the real and imaginary part of something that we're trying to keep track of. Typically is the voltage and the current and so forth. So there's a very, a lot of very practical applications, but here's why we can say that e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta.